Hey everybody, this is Derek and welcome back to CRM Tip of the Day presents Dynamics 365 Video Tips, your source for Power Platform and Dynamics 365 tips and instruction. In today's video, we're going to look at Power Virtual Agents. Power Virtual Agents is a great way that organizations can leverage the Power Platform to create custom chatbots with little or no code that not only can provide a tailored and customized journey for customers who are interacting with them, but they can also access information through other systems. By leveraging applications like Power Automate, we can bring in accounting information, we can access third-party services, and we can really truly provide the user with a tailored experience based upon the information that they're entering in real time. So let's take a look at how you can create chatbots very quickly with Power Virtual Agents. You can access Power Virtual Agents by going to powerva.microsoft.com or through make.powerapps.com and use selecting bots from the menu. Once you're in Power Virtual Agents, you'll see that you have the ability to create a bot. Within the application itself, up here, you have your bot menu. Bots are created per environment. So if you have multiple environments, you can select what environment you want and then create the bot directly from that scenario. Once you click on new bot, that'll give you the option to create the bot by selecting a bot name, defining the language that you want to use for the bot, and then picking the environment that you want to put that particular bot in based upon the item that you're working with. Once you've selected that individual scenario, then you will go ahead and create, and it will take several minutes to create the bot, probably in that two to three minute range before you will be taken to this screen, which is your home screen. In here, you can see things like learning opportunities that you have to further explore how to create bots, but it also walks you through kind of a step-by-step -step procedure how to create these individual scenarios. One of the key areas that you'll have in here are what are called entities. Entities allow you to take information from natural language conversations. So somebody might enter something like, you know, the city I live in is Fargo, or I live in Fargo, North Dakota. Entities allow you to extrapolate the key pieces of information and use that information inside your bot. And so it'll take something that somebody types in like I live in Fargo and it will now just extrapolate Fargo or maybe it'll extrapolate uh, North Dakota in another parameter or the zip code in another parameter. What that does is that allows you to use that information to really tailor the overall experience that people are using. Now, we're not gonna spend a ton of time on how to create these entities, but keep in mind that there's several entities created out of the box, but you can create entities as needed. One of the key areas that you're going to have when you start working with bots is what are called topics. So if you think about how you would engage with a bot, you're going to ask it a question or you're gonna make a statement or provide it with information and it's gonna give you some information back in response to whatever that information is that you've put in. That is done through a topic. So think of a topic as a conversation path. When you create a bot, it'll give you several topics that'll be created automatically. So you can see that we have a topic here for a greeting. We have a topic here for goodbye and ending conversation, so on and so forth. From your standpoint, you have to go out and define additional topics based upon whatever those specific needs are. So for example, if you think about what somebody might ask you, they might want to inquire about store hours or something to that nature. So what we can actually do in that situation is I've created a topic here called store hours. So each topic has trigger phrases. So how are people going to engage with this topic? They're gonna to engage with this topic by typing in something like, are you open today? Or when are you open? Or what are your store hours? You will need to create several different triggers in order for people to be able to launch that particular item. It's a good idea to have at least five, but obviously the more triggers that you have, the better off you're going to be in the long run because it's gonna be able to find that information. Each topic will be a little bit different based upon the triggers that you're gonna define. The next step that you have is you need to go into and actually define the conversation path. And so this is done by going in and using these different nodes. So the first thing that you'll see in here is I have my trigger phrases that are defined and then I have a message that says I'd be happy to help you with that, I just need more information. 
From here, you can start adding individual information like displaying a message, or in this case, I added what's called a question node to actually ask it a question to capture a little bit more information. Okay, I'd be happy to give you some store information. I just need to know where you live. Do you live in Fargo or do you live in Seattle? Based upon that, now it is going out and it is saving this information in order for it to be stored at a later time. Then it will go out and create conditions. So these conditions will be based upon if somebody picks Fargo or if somebody picks Seattle. So if somebody picks Fargo, I added a message node, which just displays a message to the user that says, hey, Fargo's hours are from nine to five. If somebody chooses Seattle, now I can see that their hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And so what you're doing with these topics is you're just creating what that path is going to look like if somebody were to engage. And you can use these different what are called conversation nodes to do things like add conditions or use the call in action to launch a Power Automate flow or show a message or even switch between individual topics. Once you have kind of your topics in place, you can test that functionality by using the test area. So this will give you a real world experience of what a user might see if they are engaging with this bot. So for example, if I come in here and hit hello, that's gonna trigger my greeting topic. And you can see that I have turned on track between topics. So it's showing you, okay, this is the topic that I'm currently engaging with. And you can see that the checkbox is showing me that it was able to hit each one of those message nodes within that item. Now I want to go ahead and say, when are you open? The application will go out and say, hey, here I now I'm going to do that store hours topic and I can help you with that. I just need to know a little bit more information. And here's that question node that's giving those, those two options to choose from. I've picked Seattle in this case, and so now it's going to go out and tell me that Seattle's hours are from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. And I could take this even one step further. I could even come in here maybe and say, you know, what is the weather today? And here I've created a topic that actually goes out and uses some of those entity things that we talked about. So it's going out and it's asking what city that they live in and it's going to extrapolate the city based upon their response. So I can come in here and say, I live in Fargo. And it might ask me for your postal code. My zip code is And now it took those two pieces of information, Fargo and so on and so forth, and it gave me a customized weather report within the context of that topic just by using some of the different question nodes and items available. Once you've gone through and created the bot and you've made everything available and tested it, now you can publish it. Once you publish this bot, this will now make it available for you to go ahead and start sharing this and using it in other formats, whether you want to go ahead and use it maybe in Facebook or maybe post it to Teams or a Slack channel. All of that information can be done and you can very easily deploy this bot to those different channels. Well, that's going to do it for our look at getting started with Power Virtual Agents. Obviously, there's a lot more that can be done when, it, when you talk about Power Virtual Agents. So if you're interested in maybe a more in-depth look at how to create bots and better work with entities and how to manage topics and create some of those conversation plans, including using things like Power Automate in a little bit more detail, please check out my free course that's available at 365.training. Uh, please click the link below in order to access it. And also, we have many other, much other content out there that's published by a variety of different authors. Um, if you enter the code 365 Derek, you can receive 30% off any of our paid courses. But please access my free Power Virtual Agents course out on 365.training. For all of us here at CRM Tip of the Day, this is Derek saying thanks for watching everybody. Take care and have a good one.